Hey everyone, I'm Andrea Kirk with the channel The Art Chick. Welcome back. I am so excited for today. I had a company contact me. They're called Hippie Crafter and they asked me to go on their website to pick my favorite products that I want to try. And I chose the acrylic paint set as well as black canvases. And the project that I have in mind is going to be a beautiful white dandelion with a green stem against this black contrasting canvas. And the dandelion itself will have seeds floating away. And along with that, I purchased this liquid leaf gold paint. I want to use this to add a few highlights to the painting to make it sparkle and shine. And so the brown part of the seeds is going to include this paint. And this will be a project that will look good all year round. It doesn't matter what season it is, it will look stunning on your wall. And it's also great to give as a gift. And if you are interested in purchasing these supplies, I will have a link in my description. And then also, if you would like to purchase this, this is separate and not on their website, but I will have a direct link for that as well. But as far as Hippie Crafter, they have a lot of beautiful supplies that you can choose from. And I'm really excited to try them out. So anyway, check them out and get out your art supplies. I'll show you all the other basics that you need and we can get started right away. As you can see, I have my setup here and I have an iPad that has the dandelion photo and really you can go online and find anything similar to this. You want to have the black background and then obviously just a big bold dandelion and we will not be copying this exactly. I like to make things my very own and so we will have fewer seeds flying away and we maybe won't have quite so many broken up right here. And then also you want to have your black canvas and paper towels are crucial. Make sure you have those. You want to have your water as well. And then my paints, I have them all set up. I will go over the colors as we go. And then this is really nice to have. This is just a styrofoam plate. And I like this because you can just toss it in the trash. There's no messy cleanup, really easy. And then if you fill this up also, you just replace it with another one. So super simple. And then this, is really crucial to have. I think you can buy it in a smaller container. This one is a big one. It's 16.9 ounces. And I really like this size because when you're painting a lot, it's just good to have that on hand. But if you're just doing one project, find a smaller container. But it's just Gloss Gel Medium by Master's Touch. Really nice. And then the other thing you want to have so that you're prepared is just a peach colored color pencil. This is a Prismacolor. I like those better, but if you don't have a Prismacolor, just use a regular colored pencil. And this will be used to draw the stem of the dandelion and then of course the white seed head right here. And that's all the drawing that you'll need to do. And then over here I have my paint brushes. You can see that I have a lot of fine tip and then I have some rounded brushes and then my square brushes. I like these for doing the fluff of the seeds and then also have a palette knife. This is really crucial when you're mixing paints. And of course I have my paper towel underneath. So make sure you have all of these supplies and we'll get started. I've got my beautiful Hippie Crafter black canvas. I love the texture on this. It's nice and smooth. I want you to take your peach colored pencil and we are going to draw the stem. And I want you to come over about a quarter of the way, maybe a third of the way actually on your canvas. And as you're drawing your line, don't feel like you have to be completely perfect. Notice how I'm very loose with my hand and I'm using several strokes to get that straight line on both sides. They'll be parallel to each other and make sure that it's about a quarter of an inch thick. And you want to come up about this high, so almost to the halfway mark, not quite. And 
And then once you reach that point, we are going to draw the seed head and we want that to be an oval. We're going to come up, leave a little gap between the seed head and the top of the stem. And you're going to draw an oval. Again, just loosen up your hand. Don't feel like you have to be tight. Okay. And that's why we use this light color because when you paint, all of this will be hidden. And then over here, I want you to draw what looks like a bubble C, a bubble letter C. And you'll stop about right here. That's where the seeds start breaking away. And then down here, you'll stop about right here. And then out here, I want you to draw the outside of the seeds. So you want to come all the way around like this. It will touch the outside of the canvas and that's totally fine. And then come back around. And then about right here is where the seeds start breaking away. And then you want this to come up and the seeds break away about right here. So this is nice because you just have a basic outline to help map where you're going to be painting. And now we can start mixing our colors. So you'll just set this aside. To make this really easy, I want to mix just a few colors at a time. So we are doing the green stem and we will do the paints for that first. I want you to take this amazing, beautiful Hippie Crafter acrylic paint. This one is the lemon yellow in the set that they have on their website. And I like how vibrant this is. That will give a really nice contrast against the black of the canvas. And then also I want you to take the pale green and notice how I'm just doing maybe a quarter sized amount. You don't need too much. That pale green has a really pretty color as well. And then we need titanium white. And then also use their emerald green. That one has a bluish tint to it. And then I like to use a warm color along with the greens just to tone them down slightly. So I'll add the champagne color. And then you could even add just a hint of the burnt sienna. Then you'll take your palette knife and I wanna take white first and then some yellow and I'll mix those two together. And you'll get a really light yellow like this. And so far I am loving how creamy this paint is. It's really easy to work with. And then I like to keep the paint on the palette knife if I'm still using those colors to mix another color. So instead of cleaning it off, I'm going to wipe it over here and also this prevents you from wasting a lot of paint. I'm going to take that pale green and mix it into that swatch. And notice how it's super vibrant. This is where we take that champagne color, mix that in and see how that's kind of toning it down. And then take a hint of that burnt sienna and mix that in as well. And see how really nice and dull that makes the paint. You don't want it to look unnatural. And so by adding those warm colors, you're giving it that natural look. And then you can also come over here, wipe your palette knife, add some white, and that gives you a third color. And then this time you will wipe your palette knife. And then I want you to take white, champagne, and yellow, and just mix those. Maybe a little more champagne. And then one more thing we'll do is I want you to take this Viridian because as we paint that stock, it's going to go up underneath the seeds and up underneath the seeds, it's slightly darker. And so this Viridian will be really good for that dark area. And so now you'll take the Viridian 
And then come over here and I want you to get the sienna color, the burnt sienna, mix that in, and then take more of the pale green, mix those two, and look how rich this color is. It's darker, but it's also toned down with the browns. But I still want you to add some yellow to it. So go ahead and add some yellow. But notice how it's still darker. That's exactly what you want. And if you're doing a bigger canvas, having extra paint is really good. So the smaller the canvas, the less paint you'll use. So keep that in mind. Also, we can transfer these other colors over to our other plate when we start to do the seeds and also the brown of the seeds. So it's good to keep all of them for that reason. And then as you're working, you just transfer them. You can see that I added the gloss gel medium. When you use this, you just take your palette knife and scoop it in and then apply it to your plate right here. And what we'll do is as we're painting, I will be dipping my brush in that and then dipping it into the colors just so that my paintbrush slides easier and the paint looks much prettier as I stroke it onto the canvas. On the photo, you can see how the stem comes up like this. So we're going to be painting this area and then also right here. Now the white of the dandelion seeds, that will cover what we paint. So you can go all the way up, but notice how it's lighter here and then it gets darker underneath. So I have two brushes here that I'll be using. And the first one is a Master's Touch Script Liner Brush. And it's a number one. And then the second one is the Fine Touch 3 8 of an inch square brush. The square brush is really good when you're painting a line that needs to be really straight because you can turn it on its side. So I want to dip my brush first in that gel medium, and then I'm going to dip it into this shade right here that we mixed. So that's the medium tone green. And then I like to wipe it a couple of times on my plate just to make sure it's not too gloppy. And then you'll come over here and as straight as possible, you're going to slide up the side like this Okay, you can lay your brush a little more flat just to get the paint to come loose. The nice thing about having a canvas and paint from the same paint company, from the Hippie Crafter, is that they work really well together, so they complement each other. So it's nice to have these products. The number one thing that I like is the pigment. I, I feel like this pigment is very rich. Okay, if you want to go over the edge, you can. And then just make sure you paint all the way up to the top. Don't worry if it comes over on the side. That's totally fine. In the middle, I want you to get that script liner brush and dip it in your gloss gel medium. And then I want you to take the really light green right here. And we're going to go up through the center And another trick that I want you to do, you can dip your brush in the water. So you'll dip in the water, dab on your paper towel, and then if you want to get your paint wet while you're working on it, and this is a really cool trick, you can actually blend your colors together as you're painting. And then on the far right side, I want you to take that lemon yellow and I want you to go up that side. And just do a nice smooth line. And see how it's blending into the colors that we previously painted? That's what you want.
And then I want you to take that dark green and come up here and that's where we will get darker. You just paint over the top of that lighter green. And then it doesn't hurt to also take this golden yellow that we mixed and just come over here and smooth out your sides. Make sure that they are nice and straight. I love how bright this is turning out. It's really pretty. I would even suggest take your paintbrush and you can get that burnt sienna and that champagne color, mix them together to get that brown and then get a hint of that darker green and see how that's making a really dark green, a brownish green. I want you to take that and then go up close to the center of the dandelion and just darken up in here because we want that shadow to be pretty strong. And see how much darker that is? That will look really nice underneath the white seeds. And if you still feel that you need to smooth out your lines on here, just get your brush slightly wet and just gently, very gently, just stroke. blending really well together. You can even go sideways a little bit to help blend. And then if you want it to go off the canvas, once again, just make sure that looks really good too. Just keep everything nice and straight. So by getting your paintbrush wet, it does a blur effect because if I take that brush and I go up the side of where I've painted, notice how it leaves a fuzz. It just leaves this blurry fuzz along the side. You want that because it looks very realistic as opposed to just being a really harsh line. So I like how it gradiates from the lighter shade to the dark. It looks really, really pretty. Now we can mix our colors for the center and then the seeds. So each time you paint a section of the subject, make sure that you rinse your brushes. You want them to be nice and clean. And then the only color that we need to add to our plate here is this cool gray. And then we have all the other shades that we need. But basically, we're going to do a cream color. And so you can take the white and come over here. And we're just going to add the champagne to it. And I want to do two different sides. So one side will be lighter than the other side of the seed head. And so on the other side, we will get slightly darker, so we'll come over here, and I want you to add a little bit of the yellow, so not very much, and then the champagne, and so it gets slightly darker, and I would even add just a hint of that cool gray, and then also take that champagne and the paint that's on your palette knife and add more white. 
Notice how I'm just mixing the paint anywhere on my plate. That's totally fine. Okay, I just added a little more white to that. So now I have three shades, and the reason I did three shades is because I want that seed head to look rounded. And this time I'm going to use my rounded brush. This one is old. I mean, I can't even read what's on here, but if you look at the brush itself, you can see that the tip is maybe a half an inch long and it's just, it's rounded and fuzzy and really nice to the touch. So with the lightest shade, I'm going to dip my brush in that and also you can use your gloss gel medium and come over on that left side and just follow that oval pattern that we drew. And you want the paint to be pretty thick. So make sure you have a lot of paint on your brush. And then as you come over to the other side, you'll be really light along the edge, but in the center where it's still black, that's where I want you to take this greenish color right here that we mixed, the light green, and I want you to blend that in. And then wipe your brush off and then take that really skinny script liner brush and I want you to dip it into this color that we mixed over here And I want you to go around the edge. So that we have three different shades on here. And don't worry if it's not perfectly round because we're going to be connecting the seeds to it. And then I want you to take pure white. So then you'll just take that skinny brush into the pure white. And I want you to go in here and you're going to do diagonal white lines. And what you are doing is you're just adding some highlights in there that we can then do the seed dots. But before we do, dip your brush in the white again. So the first time we went from right to left and this time we're going to go left to right. and you're doing this cross hatch pattern. And then you'll blend gently. Just take your brush and go over those lines gently and make them blend together like up at the top. See how they disappear? You don't want the cross hatching to go all the way up because it won't look natural. But what I wanted to do was to create a pattern here that would make it look more realistic. And then again, now that we've done that, we can add a shadow. So just take that peachy color, come around. You want to be inside of that outer line. So just come in a little bit. And then from here, we want to get a really fine tip brush. So this one is an AIT Art Russian Sable round brush and it's size zero. And I'm just going to dip into the gray. And with that, I am going to do my little seeds. And you want them to be equal distance apart. And so you just go up those rows where we painted the diagonal lines and just follow that pattern. And then you can do the same thing on the other side. And then up here, I want you to make them disappear by adding more of that peach color. So just dip your brush and then I want you to lighten the ones up here so they almost disappear. You want them to fade away they can blend into the background because you don't want it to look like polka dots you just want it to be very subtle 
And the whole point behind this is to make it look like you've got texture on here. On a separate plate, I want you to take this burnt sienna and we're going to add that and the burnt umber. and orange. And then I'm going to use the champagne from the other plate over here. Okay, I still have paint on here. And we are going to paint the seeds, but we need probably four or five different shades. So add black as well. And then take your palette knife and I want you to take the black the burnt sienna and the burnt umber and you're going to mix a really dark brown and swipe over here with those colors I want you to take the burnt sienna and the orange and do a medium brown and then swipe over here and I want you to take that champagne from the other plate and mix that in and you have a really pretty light brown. And then you're going to swipe over here and take orange and mix it in with that. And then you have a really pretty orange accent. And then I want you to take straight black with that orange and come over here and mix one more dark color. So we have five colors to work with. Wipe your palette knife off. And with that liner brush, and this part is really fun, but with that liner brush, I want you to dip in that gel medium and then starting with the dark color, I want you to go around and you want the paint to be really wet as we work with it. So we're going to work fast because when we add the lighter colors, we want everything to be wet. So what I'm doing is I'm taking that first color we mixed and I'm going around in a fan pattern and I'm gonna bring it into that seed head in a couple of spots. And it's okay too to blend the edges, but just keep fanning around. And the thicker the better, you want to make it look really thick so that our texture looks awesome. And see how I'm bringing some of those lines directly into that seed head? And from there, you don't even have to rinse your brush. You can just wipe it on your paper towel and then we are going to do a combination of all three of these colors. So you can dip first in the lighter one and maybe do some of the outer edges with that light color. Notice how pretty and textured it's beginning to look. And kind of skip around. You don't have to be right next to each other when you're painting these light colors. You can move your paintbrush around. And now I'm going to do the orange. So I'm going to take that orange and I'm going to come in and just add a little more color. Make some longer than others. And then take that beautiful rust color. And I want you to get some of that in there. Really, that's the key to making anything look realistic, is just have a lot of different colors to work with. And then wipe your brush, and then go to that dark color that's nearly black, and then that will go in and add some shadowing where you need it to be really dark in between. So I'm just coming in and adding some darks in here and not too much. Now on the outside of that seed head, 
I want to come around the edge as a highlight to make it really bright. And then you can even just take your brush and then highlight some areas up here. And then rinse your brush and then take gray. Come down along here and just blend that in. And see how it does a disappearing line? You can even take that gray and go anywhere that you see a harsh line and just go in and soften. Now for the fun part, we are going to do the actual dandelion seeds. On this plate that we did the browns, get a lot of white. We need quite a bit. And then you can take your gray from the other plate. I'm all about not wasting my paint, obviously. And then we are also going to add cobalt blue. I want you to notice how you can see blue around here and then also in here. So this area in here will be the whitest and then we'll have a blue fuzz. I'm going to be using this to fluff the white of the seeds all the way around. But let's first mix our colors the way that we need them. So I have white and I wanna come over here and take the gray and blend that in see them getting paint all over my fingers but that's just a given when you're an artist <laughs> okay so I have a really pretty light gray and then I want a slightly darker gray so I'm going to take the white that's on my palette knife and go over this gray to lighten it up and then I'm going to add a hint of blue and then a little more titanium white and then take that same color that's on your palette knife and wipe it off right here and then add more of your blue. And then add more white. Now here's where we get realistic. So you have your three shades here, the light gray, medium gray, and then the blue gray. But again, you have to have a color that mixes with a brown to look natural. And so I'm gonna wipe this off right here and I'm going to take some of my darkest shade and blend that in. And what it's going to do is it's going to give me a rich charcoal brown color. And we need this. You can add just a hint of white just to make it a little bit thicker. And you can add just a little more brown. You want to keep it dark, but you want quite a bit of paint. And the reason we have this is because that is going to be in your shaded areas of your seeds where they're slightly darker. And so by having all three of these and a pure white, we will get a really pretty effect. So remember with the technique when you're painting, if your paint stiffens, you've got the gel medium, but also you can dip your paintbrush in the water and then dab on the paper towel and that helps to loosen things up. And what I'm going to do is I want to get a little more titanium white. I want to be so prepared with my white that I have a lot available. And with that brush, I'd also get this square brush handy, so you have both of them. But really quick, this one right here, it's a low Cornell 7120 rake, and it's three quarters of an inch. I thought it was a one inch, but it's actually a three quarter inch. And with this one, um, we are going to start fluffing the seeds. And I love this outer edge right here because we're going to start with that. And I want you to take that pure white, but first 
dip into the glass medium and take that beautiful pure white. And I want you to take your brush and you're going to do a fan pattern. And we have to work quickly because the paint has to be really, really wet to make this work. So right now it looks funny, but it won't in a minute. Trust me. <laughs> okay, we're going all the way around to here. Now, this is where things get a little bit interesting. So from this point, we need the lighter grays. So now I'm taking this same brush and I'm going to dip into my medium gray and the gloss gel medium on my other plate. You can even get just a little bit of water on it, but make sure you dab it on your paper towel first. Now I'm going to gently pull that gray up from the dandelion seed and look how pretty it's making that edge. Dip in your water. Don't get more paint, okay? I want you to keep the paint that's on your brush because look, it's going to really soften as you pull out. See how I'm fanning outward? And look at the texture I'm getting. I'm getting this beautiful texture. Dip in your water again. It's crazy how crucial the water is. Usually I don't recommend water, but today with this particular project, you need it. So again, dip in that water anytime it stiffens up and just pull outward. Outward and around, outward and around. Look how soft it's looking. Now dip it in that lighter gray, and I want you to come on the inside and do the same thing. But do less, you don't want quite as much. And see how I'm just gently coming around. You can even go up into the seed right here into the fluff with that lighter gray. And then I want you to take that medium gray again and go on the inside and skip a level. I want you to come in between, like right here, and I want you to be sporadic, okay? You're going to paint sideways, sideways, like just turn your brush and there's a reason we're doing that. And then on the base of this right here, I'm taking that dark gray, that charcoal gray, I'm getting my paintbrush wet. And now I'm gonna go up into here with the charcoal gray, and I'm going to smooth things out just gently. See how I'm just really lightly going up in there. You can even pull some lines this way. Not very many, okay, keep it very limited. Okay, now I'm gonna do a colorless wet brush technique. So I'm taking my 3 eighths of an inch brush and this time it just has water on it. And I wanna go around the edge and dilute the sides of the white right here. I want them to be really fluffy and diluted. And you can also take that blue, that really pretty purplish blue color that we mixed, and I want you to come up in here and just add some color. Okay, make some strokes longer than others. Just be very careful. You can do long strokes and short strokes. What we're trying to do is we're giving this dandelion softness, okay? By adding the blues, by adding the whites and the grays, all of it, it's making it look soft and fluffy. And then on the outside, again, I want you to take that pretty blue shade. Okay, and I'm pulling from this. You can see that really pretty color that we mix, that's what I'm pulling from. And come to the outside 
and just put some color on the edge, not too much, because I want it to come down a little bit further. I have just enough water on there. I'm dipping and dabbing. So I'm going to come back down. I'm going to do just the wet brush technique. So the color's not on it, the color's on the dandelion itself. And what this does is it gets rid of that canvas texture and it just makes a really soft outer edge. Okay, see how the canvas texture disappears when I do that? That's the whole point. I am just working with a wet brush right now. It doesn't have the paint on it, but I'm pulling the paint that I already painted on the dandelion. I'm pulling that outward to get softness. And if you turn your brush sideways, you can actually get the tiniest little lines. Can you see that? Can you see how my lines are turning really skinny because I'm turning my brush sideways? The whole key is to make it look realistic. In here, we want that to look a little bit smoother too. And so again, I just have a brush that, that is colorless and I'm going to get water on there after I dip and dab and I'm gonna pull that paint down into here. So I have my brush turned to the side and I'm just pulling that paint inward. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get everything to look softened, but I also want to fill this area with color but mostly grays. You want it to be like a cotton ball, just very fluffy and soft. Pay attention to your negative space, so the space behind the dandelion. Like if you need to come up a little bit higher just to give it some more shape, you can. And then out here, this is where we get really, really light. And so again, I don't have any color other than what's on my canvas right now. And I'm just making things really soft and fluffy because out here out here that's where I'm going to have my seeds flying away if you take that fine tip AIT brush that size zero and you dip it in just pure white you can come around here and start adding lines okay you're going to do some pure beautiful lines and I want you to paint over and over again with that same paint on your brush. Don't dip in the white for a minute because you want some to be lighter than others. See how it gets lighter as I use it? look like a photo when it's hanging on a wall from a distance. If you get some jagged lines, just take that little square brush and go in and just soften things. You can take that small square brush 
and you can dip it into that really dark brown. And if you need to go in and add just a few dark areas, you can. If you feel that maybe some areas didn't get dark enough, you can go back in there and just darken those. But don't get carried away. If you get carried away, you're going to lose that softness. In fact, get your brush a little bit wet and just go in and smooth around that area that you darkened to blend it in. You know, on the photo, you have some seeds that you have like little dots like this and then they fan out. And so just take the corner of that brush and do a few at a time. You notice how I'm just adding those in there. I want you to take your liner brush and then go in and you're going to fan. I would get it wet first and then you're going to fan out with the white. You can even add more white to your brush and then just on both sides, just kind of fan out and then have it continuously like go outward like this. And what that does is it adds an additional layer of texture. See how I just spider out? So I'm gonna continue doing that on time lapse and just watch how I continue to layer and fluff out and then I'll show you how to do the seeds going outward, flying away. So as I've been painting with this brush, that's the script liner brush, I am having so much luck in getting it to paint fine tip. And so let me show you how to do the flyaways. And these colors that are on here, you can use for the seeds themselves, for the seed stems. And so let me hurry and give you one example of how to paint that. And then I want you to add yours out here. And you can do as little or as many as you want. But basically, you will start with the center, okay? And I'm going to do one right here. Notice how I just did a white center. And then I wipe my brush off on my paper towel. And then I'm going to dip and dab in the water so that I have water on my brush. And then I'm going to come over here and start fanning out, okay? And I'm barely touching with my paintbrush. Okay, the lighter you touch, the better the lines. So you spider out on both sides. So now I'm going out on this side. And really, if you need any paint, you're going to be pulling that paint from that white in the center. See how careful I'm being? I'm barely touching, so do not push down hard. This takes a lot of control with your hand and your paintbrush. But see how light and wispy that is? And then you take that paintbrush, dip it in the water, wipe it off, and then dip into the gray, that charcoal gray color. Make sure your brush is pretty wet and then dab on the paper towel and then come over here. You're going to paint the stalk of the seed and at the very end of that, 
that's where you take this color. And if your paints are drying out, just add some water. I am loving the Hippie Crafter paints. They are really good quality because when I add water to them, they come back to life. That's amazing. Take the end of that brush and I want you to do a little seed shape like that. And then at the very tip, you're going to take white and you're going to paint just the very tip of that. Anytime you paint those really fine lines, just make sure your brush is nice and wet so that your paint just glides beautifully. You don't want any blotchy lines on here. See how light and wispy that is? So now if you do a few in here and then have them floating outward and you can turn them in different directions, it's going to look really light and airy and super pretty. So I'm going to put it on time lapse now that I've shown you how to do this and you can continue with that process. Now that you're done with this, you can apply the gold, and this is really, really pretty. And you won't need a plate for this. You can just paint directly out of the bottle. Just make sure that your brush is very clean. And I would recommend, once again, that script liner brush. And you'll just dip into that. And I want you to highlight sporadically just around the dandelion. And what will happen is that when it dries, it leaves a beautiful shimmer. And then I also want you to paint the tips of each of the seeds with the gold. And then when it dries, you can lift it up and you can move it back and forth and you can see just how pretty that shimmer is. And there you go. There's your dandelion. Beautiful, realistic, and then of course, to have that really pretty shimmer in the light. It's just a beautiful piece to have. So I hope you enjoyed my tutorial. And once again, be sure to go online to Hippie Crafter and check out their art supplies. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe and be sure to check out my website for beautiful art prints of my work. And stay tuned for more amazing projects to come. See you next time.